This video is about C4, Kirchhoff's laws. Kirchhoff had two circuit laws that we need to use. Kirchhoff's first law, which is sometimes called the current law, looks at what happens when current flows into or out of a junction. Because charge is conserved and is not used up, the amount of charge per second that flows into a junction must be equal to the amount of charge per second that flows out of a junction in total. Because the rate of flow of charge is the current, that means that the total current into a junction equals the total current out of a junction. Now we could define current into a junction as positive and current out of a junction as negative, or we could define them the other way around. It actually doesn't matter. Let's define the current into a junction as positive and the current out of a junction as negative. In that case, the total current is zero, and in fact that would be true even if we had defined our currents in the other way around. So Kirchhoff's first law can be written as a sum of all currents is zero. If I have two wires connected with a junction like this, then as there is only one wire in and one wire out, then the current in I4 must be equal to the current in I5 to make sure that the sum of all the currents of this junction are zero. A consequence of this is that components that are in series must always have the same current and that if components are in parallel then there must have been a branch at some point in the circuit before those two uh, currents and therefore the currents are shared between those two components. If we have a look at an example of this, the current in the part of the circuit I'm now highlighting is the same at all points in the circuit where I am highlighting. So the current through component A is exactly the same as the current through component B. At this point there is then a junction and so the current through C plus the current through D has to be the same as the current through A which is also the same as the current through B. But the current through C plus the current through D is equal to the current through B. And then when these currents are recombined, we are back to that original current in this part of the circuit I'm highlighting here. If the current in A equals 0 0.50 amperes, then that is also the current in B. If the current in C is 0 0.20 amperes, then the current in D must be 0 0.30 amperes, so that the current in C plus the current in D added together are equal to the current in A, also equal to the current in B. Kirchhoff's second law is occasionally called Kirchhoff's voltage law. For Kirchhoff's second law, we're concerned with loops around a circuit. And to indicate the different loops in this circuit, I'm going to use two different colours, yellow and blue. If there are components that are in both loops, then the route that is coloured in will be a mixture of yellow and blue, which will come out as green on my screen. So let's look at the first loop. Current flowing from the power supply and through the first resistor. Now Kirchhoff's second law says that the potential difference dropped across the components in this loop are equal to the potential difference gained in the power supply of this loop. So if we call the power supply potential difference epsilon for the EMF, and let's call the voltage across the resistors V1 and V2 on this loop, then whatever we gain as the current passes through the first component, which is this power supply, we lose when it passes through the other two, or epsilon equals V1 plus V2. And this is conservation of energy. Remember that the definition of potential difference is the work done per unit of charge. In the second loop, we start from the power supply, so we pick up epsilon joules per coulomb, so epsilon volts, and then as we pass through this circuit, we pass through this second resistor before returning and passing through that first resistor. If we label the potential difference across this second resistor V3, then we could say on the second loop, epsilon equals V1 plus V3. And I will just highlight these so you can easily see what loops these equations refer to. Now hopefully you can see that I can subtract one equation from the other using the idea of simultaneous equations to get 0 equals V2 minus V3 for example. In other words, V2 equals V3. 
And this is another consequence of Kirchhoff's laws. The consequence of Kirchhoff's second law is that components in parallel have the same potential difference across them. But components in series share the potential difference between them. We can summarise the consequences of those two Kirchhoff's laws in a table like this, where the voltage across two components in series is shared, but the current through two components in parallel is shared. The voltage across two components in parallel is the same, but the current through two components in series is the same. And you get a table that looks like this. Now I'll finish with giving you an example of how you can use Kirchhoff's laws. So let's start with Kirchhoff's first law, which is the current law, on a circuit like this. If we want to know the current in this middle branch here, we know that we have got 0.2 amperes flowing out of this junction, and so far only 0.15 amperes flowing in. That means this must be 0.05 amperes. And finally, we can look at potential differences and say that if we are picking up 1.5 volts across the uh, the power supply and we drop off 0 0.5 volts here then within let's take the first loop here we know we've got 1.0 uh, 1 volts left to drop across this middle resistor and so we could fill that in 1.0 volts and because the second resistor is in parallel with that that is also 1.0 volts